Hi guys, I'm going to try and get this done before my mum phones, which she does most nights. Not every night, but most nights. Because uh, I might be going over to mum's tomorrow. I do keep an eye out on Facebook in case she jumps on there, because she does occasionally. But, uh, anyway, today was Thursday, it was my payday. Excuse me, oh, a bit of wind going on. Ooh, I've got the hiccups as well from the sound of it. Um, hasn't really been a bad day today. I bought that um, bundle of My Little Pony stuff. Which I put up in a separate video for a reason. Because I know not everyone who subscribed to me is going to want to watch that sort of stuff. So I figured if I put it up as a separate video, then they can choose. <laughs> and choose to watch it or not. Anyway, um, yeah, so my shelf is now pretty much full. Uh, I don't know why, but I just want to buy plush toys lately. I'm not really fussed about the vinyl figures, I just want plush toys. Don't know why. <laughs> That's just what's taken my fancy at the minute. Right, anyway, um... We'll just show you something on here. Look, this is how toy companies and whatnot cheat. Two different mugs, right? Difference being this one's metal, that one's ceramic. But look at that. The exact same picture on each. Albeit the quality looks different, but probably because it's on two different materials. But <laughs> it is exactly the same picture. You cheaters. <laughs> That's cheating. That's doing things in a very cheap manner. We'll just manufacture the same things, but we'll... Instead of making a variety, we'll just stick the same print on it. Cheats. <laughs> yeah, I know they do it just to save on cost. Because I suppose the more sort of choices they have, the more it would cost to manufacture, and the more it'll cost us to buy and whatnot. Or so they say, anyway. Hey, my friend who came up who I was doing that bike for, which is no longer here, it's out of my way. It's not quite done yet, we haven't done the front gears, but it rides, we've got the rear gears done at least. We can't find a front derailleur mech that will fit. I don't have one. I've got a big box full and not one will fit that frame. Well actually the ones that do fit the frame are the wrong type. Because you get types that can either pull upwards or downwards to um, move the Dralia mech. Um, or nowadays you can actually get a universal one, which you know you can actually switch the cable. So it doesn't matter on the bike where the ca whether the cable comes in from the top or the bottom, it'll work. You can um, connect it either way. And I've got two of those, but they're seized. Completely seized up. So I'm going to chuck those in the bin when I next get a chance. And remember... Um, but anyway, we walked down to get the gear cable to do his rear gears with, and uh, on the way back up, we stopped off at the junk shop, because we had to walk past it anyway, and uh, he bought a box of LPs for a pound. Actually had five pounds on the box, I think it would have been worth it just for the fiver, but I guess the guy in the shop was um, pissed off of moving the box around. <laughs> so he just said, give us a quid and you can take the box, so... That's gone. Uh, my friend literally took out, I think, one, maybe two LPs from the pile and gave me the rest. There is a few in there that I wouldn't mind actually keeping hold of, but there's a lot of classical stuff. and I might keep a few just so I've got a variety. You know, there's one which has got 1940s hits on it. I'm not really into that sort of stuff, but I still figured it might be nice just to keep hold of something like that. Uh, so I should have quite a nice selection going eventually. It's just a shame they haven't got their sleeves. So I don't think they're actually worth anything. Some of them are in really bad condition as well. I may end up throwing several out. But I don't know if you can see if I just move around. Yeah, you can from here. Look, you can see all the fingerprints and crap on them. 
but I don't know what's going to be the best way to clean them. I'm on a group on Facebook, which is all about, you know, LPs and records and record players and things, so I think when I remember, I'll put a post on there and just ask, you know, what's the best way to clean them? Because obviously I don't want to damage them. Not the ones I want to keep anyway, the ones I've got chucking in the bin, it don't bloody matter. I suppose I could frisbee them out of the window and see how many bits I can shatter them into. But then that would just be a big mess to clean up and I don't think my neighbours would appreciate that. <laughs> One of these days I'm going to come through here and I'm going to boot up all my computers and whatnot. Give them all a run, make sure they're all work. Because um, they do actually say you shouldn't leave things like that sitting for too long, so. Boot the TV up. That was actually my, a, um, for those that don't know this, was a, um, a trash find. I found this down by some um, bins not far from here. It was left in with a, several other bits down by um, some wheelie bins. So I took my chances and grabbed it. And apart from not having the remote control, the whole thing works. And I thought, you know, for my consoles up there, this larger TV would be better than my little portables. The, my two little portables under here... Um, because there's one there, you can't see it. And there's another one up there, you can't see it. Because they're both black. <laughs> this one I bought in 2005. I haven't got, I haven't even got a bloody light I can shine on there. But yeah, there's one under there that I bought in 2005. Brand new, from Lidl. And the only thing that's actually failed on it is the remote control. And there's one under there that's a lot older. Probably from the 1990s. Maybe even 1980s, but it's in black plastic, so I would actually say late 80s, early 90s. And that was a one a friend gave me that was he had sitting in his attic for years. And when he moved out, he was going to chuck it, so I thought I'll have that one as well. So I've got a couple of spare, you know. Seeing as uh, CRT TVs are getting a little bit hard to find. I do like to use those on that sort of stuff, so. Yeah, and I've got my old black and white one there as well, which I rescued. Which works, which I use my old computers on, which I actually don't know why I keep those old computers, because I don't use the damn things. It's been very tempting to actually um, eBay them, you know, and sell them to someone who... Uh, who could actually make use of them and use them. I might still do that at some point this year. I've got the um, Sinclair ZX Spectrum here collecting dust. And I've got the Amstrad under there. They both work absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with them. Uh, <laughs> it's just that I don't use them and don't do anything with them. Well... In all fairness, I barely use those. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, I also um, gave my friend the mud guards back that I. When I bought that Saracen off of him, that, uh, there, try again, it had mud guards, um, or fenders, if you're American. Uh, what else? A seat post which had a suspension spring on it that I had to take off because I couldn't actually get on the bike because it was too tall. <laughs> and I'm such a short ass. I'm only five foot four inches, so or thereabouts, five foot four, five foot five, something like that. Five foot six, according to the police. No, <coughs> last time I got arrested, you know, I just stood there and they just went five six. I'll do. No proper measurement. I just couldn't be asked. I can't remember what that was for. Oh yeah, um, suspicion of handling stolen goods because they found a bike in the, the garden where I was at the time. I actually came round to see my brother and one of the coppers um, saw the bike. I had no idea it was stolen. Absolutely no idea and the young lad I got it from had no idea it was stolen either. 
because um, someone who the lad I got it from knew gave it to some kids on the estate to uh, play with and this lad went and rescued it and then he had to clean out the garage under mum's orders, his mum's orders <laughs> and uh, I ended up with it but it actually turns out that the lad that gave it to all the kids on the housing estate <laughs> stole it from his mother <laughs> but yeah when I got you know arrested for that because obviously the cops had to they didn't have a lot of choice didn't they so I weren't even handcuffed <laughs> I've never been handcuffed I've been arrested a couple of times in my life and I've never been handcuffed Never been searched either, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh well. I don't plan on getting arrested again. <laughs> Them couple of times were enough. Oh well. We learn, or at least some of us learn our lessons. Even if we do have to learn them the hard way. completely lost the thread of what I was actually saying before I started saying about getting, oh yeah, that was just about the height, wasn't it? You know, they literally stood me up against their chart and just went like that, you know? Brushed my hair. <laughs> Not proper down on the head, you know, proper measurement. So that just proves how much they really cared. I did get a couple of Lego models as well. I've got a police van and a burger van, not a burger van, a pizza van. And, uh, I'm not going to go into details on those because this isn't the Lego channel. I do have my um, The Brick Nut 30 channel for all my Lego stuff. So we'll be doing reviews on those, so if anyone comes across this video and likes Lego, then give that channel a, a um, look. I do reviews, I, you know, I do all my builds and whatnot and updates of my town, well, anything Lego related really on that channel. This is just my bit of everything channel, about me. It's not about anything specific, it's just about me and... My dull and boring life, hence the name, Life of an Englishman. That's why I changed the channel name to that, because I am an Englishman and it's my life, so I felt that was a more fitting name. Right. Like I said, I'm not sure what's happening tomorrow, not until Mum rings me. Uh, if she rings me, she might not. If she's fallen asleep, probably not. Actually, speaking of sleep, I'm feeling quite tired now. But then again, I've been busy all day, so... Um, that parcel's ready to be picked up in the morning. Probably around about 11 o'clock. That seems to be his usual time. He's a good carrier. And he's um, pretty on the ball. I can't complain. Uh because my Hermes, they, um, they don't actually employ you, they sort of subcontract you, so their drivers are like self-employed, if that makes sense. A really weird way of doing it, but I, I don't know if that's a way, or the reason why they can charge so little. <laughs> to post um, items. That's why I use them for items such as my Xboxes and any laptops and things that I post. Something which has um, got a fair bit of weight to it. Or more than two kilograms. I use my Hermes because uh, with Royal Mail if your parcel weighs more than two kilograms they want you 
or will want you to post it via Parcel Force, which is owned by Royal Mail, and they will charge you twelve ninety nine to post it. Whereas I could post the exact same item, if we say for argument's sake it weighs three kilograms, with my Hermes for six pounds something for half the price. Six pounds something because I add the um, collection from home because I'm not near a parcel drop off. So I have to add, I think it's about 35p, otherwise it'll be less than £6 if I could get to a parcel drop-off point. But the nearest one is about 6-7 miles away, and I don't drive. And I'm not cycling that sort of distance with a parcel like that. No thank you. I'll pass. <laughs> I'll spend the extra 30 odd pence and... Uh, have it collected. <laughs> but um, so far, touch wood, I don't want to jinx it, my Hermes has been good. Uh, I know people have had bad experiences where they haven't had parcels turn up or they've turned up damaged or something. But like I said, touch wood, I've received every parcel from them that I've ordered online and has been sent by them and Every parcel I've sent has been received, so, yeah, touch wood, I can't complain. I hope it stays like that. But, uh, as Sod's Law goes, there's a first time for everything. Which is annoying, because, um, obviously, if, with eBay, if the buyer doesn't receive their item... Even if you op they open a case and you try and fight it, eBay will always go in the buyer's favour, so you'll always end up having to refund them anyway. I really don't think it's fair, because, in my opinion, if it's lost in the mail, it's not your responsibility. It's, you know, when it goes in the mail, it's out of your hand hands, you know. But um, I suppose the way eBay sees it is uh, item not received, then the buyer should get their money back. Which I suppose, you know, if you were a, a large company, you would do the same thing, you know. Refund the buyer if um, a customer didn't receive their goods. So... But um, I think selling online, that's the one thing that actually worries me, is when I post an item, that it will actually get there. I've only had it happen a couple times where the um, buyer has, well, at least claimed it hasn't turned up. But you can't tell whether if they're just trying to pull a fast one or not, can you? So you've just got to go with it and uh, refund them. You know? And there's no way you could even... Even if you ask them to prove it hasn't turned up, you know, how can they prove it? <sighs> it's annoying, but again, what can you do? I value my feedback, so I will always stay on the good side of bars as much as possible. Anyway, I've got ten minutes left, so I'm going to shut this down now. I think I've rambled on enough. Besides, I've got a cat purring down my ear hole. He's there. <laughs> it, he doesn't do this just because I've got the camera on. He does it when I've got the phone to my ear as well. You know, I don't know why. Either when I've got the camera on or when I'm on the phone, he's got to sit here beside me purring down my ears. Haven't you? Hmm? You want your dick? Did I feed you earlier? I can't remember if I topped up his dish or not. Actually, if I did, that was quite a few hours ago, so I suppose I should do it before I go to bed. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Um, like I said, I'm not sure what I'm doing tomorrow. I could end up pottering around here being bored. Because I can't even do anything on my Lego town, because I haven't got the bits. Not yet. But because I chose to um, put off paying my phone bill... 
It's going to leave me a little bit less next time I get paid, but not by a great deal, so I'll get the track then. The track and the base plates to go up there is what I want, because it's got to support that outer track. So I've got a gap there. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, excuse me. I do apologise for that. I just took a drink of Coke, didn't I? Anyway, as I was saying, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like if you liked the video, dislike if you didn't, and subscribe if you haven't already and if you want to. And until next time, see ya.